Halo. Hai Jana. Hai Caitlin. Halo. Good. We're just gonna wait a couple more minutes. And then I'm gonna set up the music quickly. How are you doing, Jill? Hi, Lisa. Everything going okay? Yeah, thanks for asking. Ron's okay? He's coming along nicely. He's seeing um, Nitin's um, current replacement for Nitin. Um, family. Uh, his mom passed away, so yes. yeah. Um, Is Nitin still here or did he go yeah, back home? You're mad. Awful. I can't He's going to be gone for just over a month, Lisa. Pardon me? He's going to be gone for about just over a month. But he's still here. He didn't go back home. He's gone back to India. Oh, he did go back to India. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So he'll be there about quarantine when he comes okay. home. Right, right, right. Terrible. I was chatting with him just Poor on thing that it was awful. I can't even, it all happened all of a sudden, right? Kind of. I don't think she was super well. Sad. Oh, anyway. He's heartbroken. Oh, I know he was very, very close to his mom. He doesn't have a dad, right? I thought so, but I'm not 100% sure. I thought his dad passed away many years ago, but I can't remember either. Mm. Very sad. So nice to see you guys. I know. Julie, you're in the dark. It looks peaceful. I know. Am I scary? A little Great. Bit? <laughs> Donna and I were with the exact same background of what we see Mila with right now, not too long ago. <laughs> I like your hoodie, uh, Andrea. We did um, a quick mobility. Hmm? Oh, you guys did Ash's class too? Yeah. Oh, you guys are going to be jello tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if you have a towel, you can grab one, um, whatever size, just as long as it's good enough for you to, you know, do some reaching with the towel later on. The longer, the better, of course. But um, you probably don't need anything longer than this. You can grab a towel. If you have a yoga strap, even better. Grab a yoga strap. <laughs> the girls are behind you, Mila. <laughs> yeah, I so know. Cute. Wave to Auntie Andrea. Hi, guys. Papala, good night, Lenny. Don't be noisy, okay? <laughs> Should we start soon? I gotta sneak out. I have. Uh, yeah, you guys go ahead. I have to sneak out. Mila, I've got a conflict tonight, so I just wanted to pop in and say hello. Oh, thanks. Okay, no worries. Yes, I will I will handle it from here. You got it. Awesome. Okay, see you, you guys. Do your thing. Okay, bye. Bye. All right, great. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. Um, so if I'm not sure if you guys have time to grab a towel just in case, because uh, we're gonna go into some deep stretches tonight. So if you're gonna be, if you know you are tight in the hamstring, in your lower back, um, it's better to have a towel just so that you have some leverage to pull against. And whatever props you need as well, you go ahead and grab that. Great, okay, let's get started. So we will start in the seated position. You can, if you have a block, you can prop yourself up a little bit higher just so that you have, it helps to kind of tilt your 
entire pelvis forward when you are doing that. So you can just have your legs very comfortably crossed like so. I just have them one in front of each other. If you don't have a block, you can just sit on the towel. So the idea is to have your knees where your knees are below your pelvis. So it actually helps to promote, you know, blood circulation downward, your energy flow downwards as well. And then once you have your seat set up, you can go ahead and start with just placing your hands on your knees. And then you can just close your eyes and just follow my verbal cues. You're gonna start with just grounding your energy downwards with your shins touching the ground, with your knees pointing down towards the floor, you think about them as your anchor. And it's anchoring you down. And then where your center of your body is, where your pelvis, your abdomen is right now, you consider that your center. And you're gonna feel your center slowly expanding as you inhale. You're gonna draw the breath in and really fill the belly. And then you're gonna slowly exhale all the way out and let the belly fall. And just take your time and take your moment to kind of bring your awareness inwards towards your body and just start to notice any little fidgeting or twitching of your eyelids or anything that you feel like it's still a little bit tense and nervous. You acknowledge that and then you just try to relax that. Relaxing your jaw a little bit so you're not biting the teeth too close together. Just kind of have it relaxed so that allows your breath as you draw the breath in, it allows the breath to go through the back of your throat, all the way down, filling the belly and your lungs. And all the way back out through the nose. And I want you to imagine now that your energy is starting from the center of the body and is reaching up towards the ceiling through your spine. And you wanna imagine a straight line reaching all the way up towards the ceiling. So the back of your neck is neutral and the crown of your head is neutral. Your shoulders are dropping down. You're getting a little bit more relaxed. See if you can listen to your breath. And keeping your inhalation and your exhalation just as long and just as deep. Good. And you can slowly open your eyes. And if you're sitting on a prop or a block, you can take that away. And we're just gonna start with some really gentle stretching for your neck. You're gonna place your right hand underneath your buttocks and you're gonna place the left hand onto the top of your head towards that right ear. And you're just gonna gently pull the head towards the left shoulder and drop the right shoulder down towards the floor. Now you can adjust the angle of where you're stretching here. If you wanted to stretch right along the side of your neck, then you'd keep the ear reaching towards the shoulder on the left side. And you can tweak it. You can change the angle a little bit as you tilt the chin down. The stretch is gonna move towards the back of your neck a little bit more. So find that sweet spot where you feel tight the most. You don't have to put too much force on that hand that's on the top. Just let the breathing do the work.
You can change up the angle slowly so that you get a full stretch all the way around the neck. And you're gonna come back up, switching hand, switching side. Just be aware that you're at the very beginning of your practice tonight. So your body may be a little bit tighter from a whole day of being awake and doing things and training. So just allow some time for the body to loosen up. And then you just slowly add the intensity, and deepen the stretch as you go along. Changing up the angles as well for this left side. Great, and you're gonna come back up. And now this time you're gonna place your hands behind you. Either your fingers are pointing back or fingers are pointing forward. They both work just as fine. Your intention here is to open up the chest and stretch along the whole front of your chest here. So whatever you feel comfortable with. Now with your knees on the floor, you're gonna point your knees down towards the mat and just lift your hips up. And you're gonna feel a pretty good stretch along the pecs. And then you're gonna, if you're comfortable, you drop the head back or you can look up to the ceiling. And you're gonna come back down, release that. This time you're gonna walk your hands forward keeping your bum as close to the floor as you can and keeping your back as straight as possible. And you know, just walk slowly until you start to lose that straight back. As soon as you start to round your back like that, I want you to come up a little bit and think about the belly reaching down towards that heel. Get to a point where you're comfortable in staying for about five deep breaths. You should feel your outer thigh on the leg that's in front. Very gentle, kind of like a pigeon stretch. And you're gonna come up and you're gonna swap the other leg to go in front. And you're gonna move forward again one more time. Notice if you have any kind of imbalances when you do the same stretch on different sides. You may feel in one side is tighter than the other. Start to pay attention to that and try to see if you can figure it out, you know, throughout the day, what kind of movements that you do that might make that one side tighter than the other one. Great, and you slowly come back up. Good. And we're gonna move on to your knees and your palms. And we're gonna move through some cat and cow poses. Just do it at your own pace, as slow as you need. Starting with the tailbone, lifting it up, and then you really wanna open that chest. And then you're gonna start with your neck. You're gonna round through the upper back first. So really spread the shoulder blades away from each other. And then squeeze your buttocks and tuck your tail as much as you can. And going back again, moving 
Moving with your breath. Don't forget to breathe through your nose. Great, and you're gonna come back to the center. You're gonna step the right leg forward. So you're gonna have your right knee in 90 degree here. And you're just gonna sink your pelvis down close to the mat as much as you can. You're gonna walk this back foot back. So you're gonna ex extend the distance between the two. And with your left hip here, I want you to see if you can keep it pointing straight forward. And you're just gonna really sink down the body weight here. This is to stretch out the hip flexor on that left leg. When you're ready, you're gonna reach a left arm up and lean back a little bit just to extend the stretch. And come back to the center. You're gonna place that right hand onto the outside of the right foot and shift that right foot back to the center of the mat a little bit. Now you're gonna shift weight back and you're gonna see if you can extend that right leg as much as you can. And then you're gonna reach the belly towards the thigh and then folding over that leg, reaching the chin towards the knee, the forehead towards the shin. Keeping the legs straight is ideal, but if it means it's too much and you're shaking a lot and it's a little bit too intense, you soften the knee, which means you still keep it engaged, but the kneecap is not being hyperextended. Breathing through the stretch here. And you're gonna come back up, inhaling. And this time you're gonna move your right arm in, shift that right foot out to the edge of the mat now. Good, you're gonna drop both of your elbows down onto the mat if you can. If this is too tight and you feel like it's never gonna reach the floor, don't lose hope. Place a block underneath your forearm and work from that level until you get to the floor. You're still sinking down through the hip in the middle right there. As if you're kind of like attempting a split. You wanna feel your groin area really stretching. As you exhale, I want you to relax your body down towards the mat a little bit more. And that's release that. Hands down, you're gonna swap legs. So first one is the lunge. You're gonna come up with the left side. Take your time to set up the left side. And you're just gonna slowly sink your hip down. It's important here as well that once you do stretch it, stretches like these, when your legs are spread, your hip is gonna tend to turn. You're gonna notice that your back leg, that hip with the back leg, which is the right side for me, is gonna turn, it's gonna wanna turn towards the right a little bit more. So you wanna see if you can bring that hip back to square. 
so that both of the hip bones are pointing forward as you're doing this stretch. And release, let's place the hand down, move the leg back to the center a little bit. I'm gonna shift the weight back, flex your toes. And then attempting to get the forehead towards the shin. Working on that straight back. And come back up, inhaling, moving the foot to the edge of the mat now. So your hands are on the inside. I'm gonna drop the elbows down. Take your time. So this is a deeper hip opening stretch. You can, then you drop the head down closer towards the floor. Just a little preparation for, you know, putting the leg behind the head tonight. No reaction. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Slowly come back up. Great, and sweep the leg back. And then just open it up so that it's like a wider angle child's pose. And just sit back towards your heels, just to kind of neutralize all of those stretching of the groin. Just sit here in child's pose for a moment. You can place your forehead down on the floor. The hands position is up to you, either in front or back. Great, and we'll slowly come up and go into your first downward dog, spreading the fingers, setting up the distance. It's about shoulder distance wide, and then you're gonna slowly push into your downward facing dog. Take your time to warm up your downward dog. I always like to cycle the heels because I have tight um, hamstrings, actually pretty tight Achilles tendon too. So just take your time to cycle it so that you're not shocking it. You're kind of testing it. As you cycle the heel, you just shift the weight from left to right as well. And then you're gonna soften the right knee. So you're gonna work on the left heel first. You're gonna really try to press that left heel down towards the mat with your right knee bent as much as you need. Great, and switching side. Now make sure that when you're doing your down dog, there's really not much weight on your palms here. Just a little bit on the wrists, a little bit on the knuckles, but not so much. Your weight, you wanna really shift it towards your legs, shift it towards the lower part of the body. Good, now bend both of your knees and stretch your hips, your bum up towards the ceiling as much as you can, reaching the forehead down towards the mat. 
And you're gonna exhale, come forward to plank. Take your time and lower down towards the mat. Okay, so let's interlace the fingers behind your back and keep your palms together and see if you can straighten your arms as much as you can. This will help to open up the shoulders a bit more too. Bring the feet together, toes and heels touching. You're gonna lift the chest up, lifting the arms away from the bum and you're gonna lift your legs up. Eyes gazing down towards the mat. Five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, release all the way down. Relax your arms, relax your head to the side. We're gonna do the same thing one more time, but this time you're gonna interlace the other finger on top. So you're gonna switch it up and it's gonna feel super awkward. Yeah, whatever finger that was that you normally use, you're gonna switch it so that the other one's on top. Good. Now try to squeeze the shoulder blade together as if you're gonna squeeze a pen in between your shoulder blades. You're gonna lift the chest up, relaxing the neck. Good. Keeping your palms really tight, lift your legs up. Good. Now squeeze the heels together. Good. Five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, release. Turn the head to the other side and rest. Good, we're now gonna enter a little bit more dynamic portion of the practice tonight. You're gonna take the hands under the shoulders, you're gonna tuck your toes, you're gonna come up into a plank position and move it back to downward dog. Take right leg up to the ceiling, stretch the right leg all the way up. Good, sweep the right foot forward. We're gonna set up for warrior one. So the right foot is in front. You're gonna bend the front knee into 90 degree. And the back foot, depending on how you feel, you can have your back foot heel up or you can have the back foot heel down. If you choose heel down, then the foot points 45 degrees out to the side. And remember I talked about the hip, you're gonna point the hip, both of them pointing forward, both sides. And you're gonna reach your arms up. If your shoulders are super tight, you can keep them apart, your palms apart. If you can, then you're gonna bring the palms together and you're gonna gaze up towards the fingertips. Staying in warrior one. And here I want you to keep dropping your shoulders down and sinking your knees a little bit deeper, coming down a little bit lower. Three, two, and one. You're gonna open up your hands and you're gonna switch, switch to the side into warrior two. So you're gonna have to readjust your stance here. So a little bit wider. And you're gonna imagine you're drawing a straight line from the front heel to the center of that back foot. Bring your arms out. Good. That front knee should be aligned with your big toe where it's pointing. Shoulders down, rib cage in. Breathing here, looking fierce. Two. One, going into reverse warrior. So you're gonna slide the hand down. I'm gonna turn your palm facing up. I'm gonna reach back and gaze up. Four, three, two, one. Coming back to the center. 
place your hands down to the floor. You're gonna bring that back foot and come forward a little bit. We're gonna set up for warrior three here. So take your time. If you need a block, you can use a block to help your balance. Um, otherwise, you're gonna start to shift the body weight forward. You're gonna bring the back leg up, pointing your toes down. And then when you're ready, you're gonna stand all the way up like a T shape with your hands in prayer position or your hands straight in front. Prayer is easier, arms in front is harder. Focusing on the balance of your standing leg. If you're in prayer, keep it towards your chest. Take your time. Three, good. Two. And one, lower down slowly. And let's step back to plank. We'll move through one vinyasa. You can drop your knee down, coming down to chaturanga, chest down. You're gonna roll forward onto the front. Open up the chest here into your first upward dog. And slowly curl your toes back to downward dog. Breathing here, keeping your shoulder in neutral. Your neck is soft and your eyes are gazing in between your toes. Good, let's do the same sequence on the left side. So you're gonna bring the left foot up, pointing it straight up into the air and really working on that right heel to reach down to the floor. Beautiful, we're gonna sweep the left foot forward now and coming into warrior one. So your choice of the back foot, either heel up or the heel down. And then arms straight, reaching up, bring the palms together. Good, now you're gonna notice that your rib cage are gonna flare a little bit because you're in a semi arch. I want you to draw the rib cage in a little bit and keep breathing. Three, two, one. Open up your arms and move your feet a little bit so you go into warrior two. Beautiful, good. So with warrior two, your fingertips are reaching towards the opposite end. You're really expanding and then you're gonna drop the shoulders down. Good work on squeezing the belly and then also squeezing the buttock. Three, two, one. Sliding your back hand down just with your fingertips. And then make it look really beautiful and graceful by leaning back. Good, don't forget the front knee, keep it bent 90 degree. Three, two, and one. Beautiful, hands down. You're gonna come back to set up your warrior three. So you're gonna shift the back foot forward a little bit. Take your time. If you need help with Balancing with the block, you're going to start with the block in front of you. And then you're going to start with working on lifting the back leg up. Until your back foot is up here in 90 degree, then you start with one hand in prayer position. And then the other hand with your body, you want to make the alphabet T. And then you're gonna drop the right hip down so that your right bum is not hiking up. Three, two, beautiful. Comes down, come down, hands down, stepping back, vinyasa through, chest down, knee down if you need to, open chest, upward dog. And let's rest in child's pose.
good job. And just slowly come up in child's pose, come back to downward dog. And you're gonna walk your hands back to the feet. Soften the knee, take your time here. Your hamstring should be fairly open now, shouldn't be as tight. And you're gonna slowly curl your spine to come up to standing. Whew. Beautiful. Now we're gonna move on to a couple of standing balancing pose. So I'm gonna move this back a little bit. So the standing balancing poses, the focus is actually on the foot that you're balancing on. Whatever is happening with the other foot, that's just a trick to distract you, okay? So they make it super fancy, but really you're working on the standing leg. So try to spread your toes as wide as you can to grip the floor and then make sure that you're not hyperextending the knee, which is when you do this. Okay, that's hyperextension and that's soft. Okay, but they're still straight, but don't push it back. Okay, so and we're gonna start with if you need a towel. Okay, I'm gonna show you the two variations and you decide if you need a towel or not. You're gonna start with the left leg being your um, support, your foundation. You're gonna hook your two fingers onto your big toe here. You're gonna stand nice and tall like this, okay? Then this is where the towel may come in handy because I'm gonna ask you to extend that leg forward. So you're gonna go extend forward as if you're gonna kick someone in the face. At the same time, what you're doing here, you're really pulling the right shoulder back and kicking the heel out. So there's a little bit of an oppositional force happening. I'm not letting it pull me, but really I'm trying to pull my right shoulder back and then the kicking the right leg out. If you need a towel, I'm gonna start with this. And holding the towel longer if you need to. I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna wait till everybody's kind of set up before I start counting. Once you're up, here is what I want you to focus on. That shoulder being pulled back so the shoulders are squared and your hips being pulled back so the hips are squared. So really only thing that's different is the leg that's coming up. Okay, let's go. Focusing on the standing leg, three, two, one, don't let it go yet. You're gonna open out to the side. Still focusing on the standing leg, chest up. Three, two, one. You're gonna bring it back to the center and release your hand, keep your leg up. Release your hand, keep your leg up. Three, two, one, exhale down. Whew. Okay. Left side, <laughs> left side, good. That last one is uh, tough. That one burns that thigh. <laughs> you ready? Okay, the right leg is gonna be your support now. You're gonna take your time and set up your left leg. You can stay here if your hamstring is extremely tight and even a towel doesn't work, you stay up. and Work on that balance with the right foot. When you're ready to extend, good. Now pull the left shoulder back and kick the left heel forward. Five, four, three, two, one. Open out to the side, good. Make it look beautiful. You guys are doing great. Three, two, one, bring it back to the center. 
Release the hand onto the hip. Keep your leg up. Five, four, I'll count fast. Three, three, two, one. Exhale down, release. Yeah, yeah. Shake it out, shake it out. Good job, guys. Okay, is everybody doing, doing okay? Yeah, okay. We're gonna move on to now the um, floor poses now. We're gonna get a little bit deep into stretching the front here and the back here. So if you know you're tight, grab whatever prop you need. I'm gonna grab a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, we're gonna start with Virasana Hero Pose. This one, I would recommend if you have knee tightness issues, um, then you can sit on the block to start with. You're gonna do the Japanese sitting style so that your knees are together. So I'll show it to you in the, this way. Your knees are together and your feet are apart like that. And you're gonna grab a block. If you don't have a block, just roll up a thick towel. And you're gonna start with this. And if you have bigger calf muscles, I want you to kind of manually roll them away. And then your toes are flat and they're pointing straight back. Okay, is that really good? Yes, good. So no funny angle, like no funny angles with your ankle here. Okay, if you're comfortable here, you start to lean back and walk your hands back. Whatever you do, keep your knees together. This is the first stage. If you're tight or if you have any previous knee injuries, you may wanna stay here. If you feel like, oh, this is okay, I don't really feel anything yet, then you take out the block. You start with the bum on the floor. Then you walk until your elbow is on the floor. And you walk until you're lying flat on the floor. And then you bring your arms up and over. Then you should really feel a nice stretch. And just make sure that you don't open up the knees, you keep the thighs together. Maria, can you keep your knees together? Can you come up a little bit and bring them together? As soon as they start to spread, you wanna keep them together and maybe stay in that, at that angle. Good. Angela, you okay? Cause I can't see, I can only see your head. I can't see the body. <laughs> also Donna, I'm looking at the wall, but I'm, Assuming that you're on the floor, you're doing okay. Good. Yes, <laughs> good. Good. Maria, are your heels outside of your bum? Yeah, can you bring them outside? So they're kind of like outside and then you're sitting in between the space. Yeah, like that. Okay, good, good. Great. Yep, Angela, correct. Good. We won't stay too long. This is um, it's one of these poses where a lot of people are tight, but some people don't feel it at all. It just really depends on you know, how your body is born with and internal rotations of your thigh. And if you've had any knee problems before, this is a really good stretch for the front of your thighs. Good, and you're gonna slowly, if you're down on the floor, you're gonna slowly use your hands, your elbows to walk yourself back up. And you can release it by sweeping your legs back in front and shake it out. Good, and then we're gonna move on to the next pose, which is a reclined pigeon. So you're gonna be lying down. You're gonna have your right leg cross over the left and kind of make a triangle like so. And with your right hand, you're gonna take it through the middle of the triangle. You're gonna interlace a finger on your left shin.
Good. Okay. Just with your head completely relaxed. Let's just talk through this a little bit. So the relationship with this pose is you're kind of using that left leg as a push to stretch the right side, the right kind of glutes outside of your thigh, a little bit towards the back, the hamstring, like a general whole back area of the right leg. If you want a deeper stretch, you can even push that right knee away from you as you pull the left knee towards you. Good, and you're gonna release the hand and just keep the right knee over the left. You're gonna cross it even further into like a shoelace. When I say shoelace, you're gonna look up, you're gonna see your knees stacked on top of each other and your toes are pointing completely opposite direction. So I'll show you this view like that. Good, okay. Then you're gonna use your hands to grab onto the outside of your feet. And just like tie shoelaces in the very end, you're gonna pull them apart, right? So you're gonna pull your legs away from each other at the same time, the knees towards your chest. So the knees are coming down towards the chest and you're pulling like so. It's the same muscle that we just stretched in that pigeon, recline pigeon, but a little bit more intense. Great, and you're gonna release that, uncross, uncross. And you're just gonna hug both of your knees towards your chest with it being neutral, just hugging your knees to your chest. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other leg so that this time your left knee is bent, goes on top of your right thigh, make a triangle and grab that right shin. Lisa Lynn, can you relax that shin down a little bit? The right shin, yes. And see if you can pull the right knee closer towards you. Good, that's it. Is it too deep? It's okay? Okay. Great. Great, when you're ready, you're gonna slowly extending the twist and stacking your knees on top of each other. So keeping the left knee on top this time and stack the knee on top and grabbing onto your outside of your feet and you're gonna pull it towards yourself and pull it down. Good, and let's release that. Uncross the legs, hug your knees towards the chest. And now this, for this one, you may need a towel. This is, we're gonna do a forward bend with you lying down. So you're gonna extend both of your legs towards the ceiling and across 
the right ankle over the left. Depending on how flexible you feel tonight, you're either going to use your hands and grabbing onto your ankles here. Make sure that your lower back is as close to the mat as possible. So you're not going into like a, you know, like a that, you know, that's not really what we're aiming for. You want to anchor the upper body on the mat and you're pulling your legs down towards your face. So if you need, this is where the towel would come in handy. You're going to hook your ankle and you're going to pull with the towel. We're going to do 10 deep breaths on this side. And then we're going to switch with the other ankle on top. And we'll do 10 more deep breaths. See if you can relax your lower back. Three, two, one, release your hands and crossing the other leg to Take your time. When you're ready, go ahead and do the forward bend again. Three, two, and one, exhaling, release. And you can bring your legs all the way down towards the mat. And just kind of give it a couple moments for the blood to kind of rush back towards your legs. And you're just gonna bring your knees towards your chest one last time. This time you're gonna give yourself a hug and just kind of move your lower back. You move your knees in a circular motion as if you were drawing a circle and move the other way around. And then you can slowly come down to your final relaxation. Your choice of Savasana, you can either just bring that towel that you just used over your eyes and rest like this, or you can bring your legs into butterfly position, which is the soles together and your arms are out, palms facing up, your choice. We're going to rest here for a couple of minutes. So I want you to completely relax and surrender in this pose.
Take your time here to bring a little bit of awareness back, starting with your fingertips and then just taking a few long inhalations and just letting it all go as you exhale. Don't worry, I can't hear you guys. Just make any sound you want. And for those who are in the butterfly pose, you can use your hands to guide your knees to close. Take your time. And you can hug your knees again, just kind of neutralize everything. When you're ready, you can drop the body to one side like you're getting out of bed in the morning. And just take your time, be as lazy as possible. Slowly bring yourself back up. Well, thank you so much for joining the class tonight. I hope it's not too deep of a stretch for, for us. It's quite deep for me, actually. If you're, well, you're welcome to unmute yourself, guys. Just have a quick chat amazing. if you want. That was amazing. Thank you, Mila. <laughs> you're gonna feel it tomorrow, I think. It's gonna be like jello butt. Beautiful. It's good stretch. My hips hey? feel so Hips feel oh, so great. Pain. Great. Awesome. I'm glad I was able to help. It's just, uh, it's good to actually dedicate just one hour for yourself and just be at peace and, you know, no distraction, just focusing on yourself. Yeah. So that was good. Well, thank you. It was wonderful energy you guys gave. Next week, uh, like behind the head. Thanks, Mila. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. All right. See you guys next week. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night.